So when Laquan got shot, the Department of Justice came and did an investigation on the, on the police department. This is the federal government. The federal government said that this is a racist, this is a racist institution. This is a racist organization. This is a racist police department, right? That have been violating the rights of black and brown people for not months, not days, not weeks, not just years, but decades. Say decades. But decades. They have been violating our rights as black people, as brown people, as residents of the city of Chicago. Say that ain't right. That ain't right. You violating our rights and you just getting away with it, right? But for a long time, I used to wonder how was they getting away with it. We'll be a thousand. We, I'd have been up here and it's been a hundred of us. I'd have been up here and it's been a thousand of us. But each time I come up here, I always watch the police smile and smirk. Even though in my heart, I was dead serious. We were dead serious. They didn't have the looks that they got now because we figured it out. See, they knew that they was protected. And they protected by this contract, so they protected by this contract. We got to reimagine this contract. So anyway, when we got to the DOJ, the DOJ came and said this is a racist institution. See, the thing about that, though, even though that you decree and you declare, right, that it's racist people on this institution, that didn't get them off of the police department. You understand me? So it's racist police. Even after that came out, that's still on the force. Yep. It's police that have literally 30, 40, 50, 100 complaints, and they're still on payroll right now. Say, that ain't right. 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 So this is what we're going to do. Go to the next slide. Right? These are the type of things that that's what's wrong with the contract. It makes it hard to identify police misconduct. It makes it too easy for police officers to lie about misconduct. We're going to talk about that. Requires officers to ignore and destroy evidence of misconduct. It makes it hard to investigate and be transparent about misconduct. And number five, which I hate the most, is it allow repeat abusers to cost taxpayers money without accountability. I don't hate that the most because of the money part. I hate that the most because it allows habitual offenses. Say habitual. habitual. Say habitual. habitual. See, what it is is that they let these officers with 30, 40, 50 complaints stay on the force. And they inflict injury on each and one of us. Say that ain't right. That ain't right. What's the next slide? So these are some of the solutions. These are some of, one of, like, these are three of many that we have to point out. That's what's wrong with it, right? We're going to touch on sworn affidavits. We're going we're gonna to touch on a 24-hour rule. And we're going to touch on the use of disciplinary uh, record. What's the next slide? So if we're talking about complaints, right? Say sworn affidavit. Sworn affidavit. Sworn affidavit. I got that ears. I love that. All right. So when 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 a police do something to you and you go to Copa, say go to Copa. Say go to Copa. When you go to Copa, you have to sign something called a sworn affidavit. Say sworn affidavit. See, the thing that's, prob that's problematic about this sworn affidavit, right, is that it requires us to swear under oath with our identity that the police did something to us. So they come into our community, afflict injury, and then when we go have to go and hold them accountable, we got to sign a sworn affidavit with our identity, right? See, I can't speak for everybody, but in my neighborhood, the police come harass us. They harass us. They come and harass us. This one, this one affidavit has to go. It, it has to go. We need to make sure that the contract says it, it, the sworn affidavit policy has to be abolished. In order for them to even order for an investigation to continue, you gotta sign the affidavit. Even if it's on dash cam, even if you got video footage, you gotta sign a sworn affidavit just so COPA can further the investigation. To say, that ain't right. That ain't right. That ain't right. And, that, and number six, you can see statistics. Statistics. 58% of the 17,000 complaints filed over a four year period were not fully investigated because they didn't have any, 
That means if we not, if, if the police do something to us, even if it's credible and legit, if we don't sign a sworn affidavit with our information on it, they not going to investigate. Say that ain't right. That ain't right. Say the affidavit's got to go. The affidavit's got to go. All right, 24 hour rule, this is crazy. Because I don't know how a public servant, somebody who's deemed to work for us, has these type of luxuries and even private citizens don't. If the police shoot one of us, they ain't gotta say nothing about it for like a day, two days, until they get their story together. If they come over here in our hood and pop one of us, it's a contractual agreement that they ain't gotta say nothing about it until they union rep come and, and come and represent them. And they can wait up to 24 hours. When it was Emperor, say Emperor. When it was Emperor, say Emperor. When it was Emperor, they used to wait weeks. They used to go weeks without investigating the police shooting. And sometimes months without investigating the police shooting. Say that ain't right. That's not right. All right. Number eight on the 25 rule. It say during that time, there is no requirement for the officers to be separated. Delays make it easier to lie and corroborate the story. So let me tell you a story. It was a young man. He was walking away from the police. They shot him 16 times, right? The officers, the officer that shot him got with his, his, his co-partners, right? Because of this rule, he got with their co-partners and they falsified the police report. Say falsified. 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 They falsified the police report because of this rule. Because it's a contractual agreement with the city of Chicago and the Blue Shirt Union that say if you pop one of us, you can not only have a day to think about it, but you can go with your counterparts and get your story together. Say that ain't right. That ain't right. Number nine, talk about what I just said. In the case of the shooter Laquan McDonald, several officers gave remarkably similar statements that were all proven false by video evidence. Thank God that we was able to get the dash cam out, right? Because if we wasn't able to get that dash cam out, it would have been their word against our witnesses. You get what I'm saying? And that's just, that's not an isolated incident. This ain't just one time the police did something. It's just one time they got caught on camera. And that's what you got to understand. This is one time that the police got caught on camera red-handed. Red -handed. And they could not deny it. Say, that ain't right. That ain't right. All right. The use of force. I definitely want to talk about this in the contract, too, when we bring it up. Let's go, Will. The DOJ recognizes the FOP contract undermines the effectiveness of CPD's accountability process. And it's basically been, it, what, what that means is everything that we've been talking about, even the Department of Justice, the federal government, has said the police union contract is how they get away with all this misconduct. This is the oh. federal government came in that investigated the police and said it's because of their contract. This is how they get away with it. Yeah. This is how they get away with it. The FOP, Large 7 Patrol Union contract. It's so crazy they call patrol unions because it's slave patrols, but we're going to touch on that later. Yeah, let's go. All right, let's I go, go. to the next one. Mm -hmm. Go to the next one. Next one. All right, so look. Um, that, that, this is back to the front Um, Now go, go back. Go back. You want to fail on that front? Now go to the uh, resources. Resource line. Yeah, cool. All right, so look. So, a part of my teaching, this is the bulk of the information. This is where you get all the meat and potatoes at right here. This is where you get the meat and potatoes of why they really, really corrupt, why they really, really doing the things that they're doing, and how much it's affecting us, right? So let's go to the first one, click FOP contract. Look at that, y'all, check this out. This is demo right here. Look at that, Nah, go to the whole contract. Oh, you think it's gonna shut out? All right, you can exit out. All right, go to that. So you, this one gonna do that too? Cause that's in white. All right, now go to the contract. Let's just try it. All right, this is the contract in its entirety. If you scroll up, if you scroll up, 
It got 33 different articles in their in their union, right? Say Article Six. Article Six. Say Article Six. 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 This is Article Six in their Bill of Rights. This is how they get away with whatever they're doing. This is what we need to focus on as a community. Yes. Is the Bill of Rights and Article Six. This is what we need to focus on in our community if we gonna change the culture. Listen, a consent decree not gonna do it. The superintendent and not the reform is not gonna do it. Uh, a new a new mayor is definitely not gonna do it. This is how we're gonna change the culture of Chicago Police Department. We have to attack this Article Six and the Bill of Rights. Say Article Six. Article Six. Article Six. Article Six. So y'all can read this in its entirety, but this will be available and made available or like on a reimagine website or hitthehood.com slash reimagine. We gonna make sure all this available. You can read the entire contract in its entirety, but Article Six is what you want to focus on the most. Say Article Six. Article Six. All right, let's go to the next resource now. Focus on Article Six. FOP rules of conduct. This is some other stuff. This is some very interesting information. Now this is, this is for the entire Chicago Police Department. This is the rules of conduct for the entire police department. If we go to Article 5 on this one. Now this dictates the conduct of all Chicago police officers. No matter if you're a blue shirt, no matter if you're a white shirt, no matter who you are. This right here, this dictates the conduct of all of them. So if we go to Article, article 5 inside this, Article 5, Right there, rules of conduct, right? You can go on here and see the rules of conduct of Chicago police officers. Say it ain't a game. Say it ain't a game. See, I love, see, I love this, I love this, right? This is, this is how you hold any Chicago police officers accountable. Because they have 55, say 55. 55. 55. 55 rules of conduct that they must abide by. There's 55 rules of conduct that every Chicago police officer is supposed to abide by. Say 55. 55. All right, like go, go to rule number eight. Rule number eight says something like, no disrespect or maltreatment of any person while on off duty. How many people, by raise a hand class, how many people have been disrespected by Chicago Police Department on and off duty? Say that ain't right. That's my take on that. So when they pull up and they get you, you tell a rule eight, you out of body, sir. Rule eight, you out of body, sir. That's what you said. See, I was in the mob. We used to holler at rules and laws when somebody was out of body. See, rule eight, you out of body, sir. Out of body, you out of body. Rule eight. You gotta learn their laws. You gotta learn their rules and use them against them. Go to go to rule number fourteen. Rule number fourteen. Making a false report, written or oral, right? Rule number fourteen. When they laugh. When you lie, you die. That's a rule. When they lie, that's rule 14. If you know they lie and you can prove it, you say that's a rule 14 violation. You go to COPA, you go to IAD, you hold them accountable. Say hold them accountable. Hold, hold them accountable. accountable. Let's go to, let's go to uh, rule number 36. Well, hold on, rule 15. Intoxication on or off duty. I didn't even know that. If they're police, they're not supposed to be intoxicated on or off duty. Look, he nervous. I'm saying, I didn't even know that. I didn't even know that. Intoxication on or off duty. That's number 15. They ain't supposed to get wasted even if they off the clock. Even if they off the clock, they ain't even supposed to get wasted. I didn't even know that. Say rule 15. Rule 15. I can scroll up some more, administrator. 34, 36, uh, nah, 30, no, nah, you can scroll, 38, 38. Unlawful or unnecessary use or display of a weapon. How many times have you been in your community and you watched the Slickers, the Jump Out Boys, the TAC unit, gang or whatever, hop out with their tool in their hand for no reason? With no reason. With no reason. They just hop out. They just hop out. They just hop out with their guns for no reason. It ain't even it ain't even gotta be just their guns. They can hop out with pepper spray, with their taser. See, this is a weapon. This is a weapon. And a billy club. A billy club. 
So when we outside and they bouncing their billy tub and baton, that's, that's unnecessary. We're peaceful people. That's unnecessary. You in rule, you in, in violation of rule 38, sir. Ma'am, officer, you in violation of rule 38. Unnecessary. Say unnecessary. unnecessary. Say unnecessary. Go to rule 55. I want y'all to learn all these. We got to know what we need to know. Rule 55. Some of this stuff is it's real important all of it is important to hold, hold them accountable but some are more extreme than others and less extreme rule 55 rule 55 holding a cigarette cigar or pipe while in uniform or in official contact with the public how many times have y'all seen a police smoke a cigar smoke a cigarette and smoke weed chew tobacco you understand what i'm saying I didn't even know this was a rule. I didn't even know this was a rule. Rule 55 said you can't smoke no squares on uniforms, uniform, sir. You can't smoke no cigar on uniform, sir. Put that out. And when you see them, say, put that out. Say, put that out. Put that out. If you want to get real greasy, you videotape them. They want to act arrogant. You videotape them. Send it to Copa. Hashtag rule 55. Hashtag rule 55. Anything you see something wrong, we're going to create an app, you're going to record it, it's going to go straight to COPA, and you hashtag any rule that they're violating. So if you see them doing something like that, you hashtag Rule 55. Say hashtag Rule 55. I need all of us to learn these rules of conduct. This is important. This is how you hold them accountable. There's some things in there that I didn't even know about, that like the intoxication on and off duty. I didn't know about that. I had to read this thing from top to bottom. And it's some more things, but those are just several that I wanted to point out that was like macro and micro for us to understand, all right? So they reimagine. So they reimagine. Reimagine. All right, so this, this one, this one is, is really important. The Citizens Data Project. The Citizens Data Project. So if you go in here, when you go in here and you um, the Citizens Data Project with the misconduct. Wow. This one, yes, thank you. So when you go in here and you click this, and you go in here, this portal, say Jamie Calvin. So Jamie Calvin was a, it is a, I'm sorry, is a journalist. He's the one that helped me find out that Laquan got shot 16 times by requesting the autopsy. So he's a journalist. Him and his, his organization created this website. This website, this website will allow you, will allow you to figure out what type of officers you got in your neighborhood. You understand? This one website will allow you what allow you to know what type of officers you got in your neighborhood. They so shook my hood. Man, I'm good. All right, so look. Say, so I use this at the last, I, I use this at the last um at the last teaching, right? So we're gonna do we're gonna do a practice run. Somebody say Glenn Evans. Yeah. Say Glenn Evans. Yeah. So we gonna type in Glenn Evans' names, right? Right? And then you click Glenn Evans' name. Click his name, please. And when you pull up Glenn Evans' name and you type this in, my, my mic went out. When you when you type Glenn Evans' name in, you, when you type Glenn Evans' name in, his profile come up. You got Glenn Evans, his year of birth his race, his sex, his badge numbers, right? The reason why he got four different badge numbers is why, who can say, who, who knows? Why, huh? They keep charging when they get in the trunk. Very good, what's another, why you think he got four? He got different positions, he got promoted. He got four different badge or star numbers, you know why? Because he got promoted. He went from patrol to the blue shirt. They didn't stop him there. He was raising terror as a blue shirt. They said that wasn't enough. Go be a sergeant. He started raising terror as a sergeant. That wasn't enough. Go be a captain. 
right? That wasn't enough. They're promoting him to a commander. Say that ain't right. Say that ain't right. So let me give you a little more demo about Glenn Evans, right? Glenn Evans was charged in 2014, right? This is my boy T.O. He can contest to this because he's the one who really brought this to my attention about, about the history of Glenn Evans, right? Glenn Evans was chasing somebody one day, right? He chasing him, right, bro? He grabbed him. He chased him into a bando. He chased him in a trap or whatever. He chased him in a bando. He grabbed him, Tumbo. Stuck his gun in his mouth. Took his service weapon out. Put it in his mouth. I don't mean just to his left. I mean in his throat. He bust his grill. Busted. Wide open, right? To the point the man couldn't breathe, right? This is before air guard. He was saying, literally, I can't breathe, right? The guy, the subject, I'm not going to call him a suspect, but the subject, the gentleman who this happened to, he tells his lawyers, right? His lawyers go tell the state's attorney office or IAD, right? They come and come check for his service weapon. They're like, man, let us see your pistol. They bring his pistol, right, bro? Yep. They swab it for DNA evidence. Yep. The DNA in the pistol yep. matches the man mouth he put the gun in. That made wow. it complaint. You understand? Yep. He called, right? You yep. think, right? Yep. Yeah. Nope. You think he called red handed, yeah, right? Call, Say what happened, Will? Yeah. I'ma tell y'all. Come on, Will. So the state's attorney pressed charges on him for like aggravated assault with a deadly weapon, right? Took him out the Let me tell you how important like picking judges and saying, said we gotta get the right judges in. Get the right judges in. And we gotta get the wrong judges out. Wrong judges out. Boom. So we go up here to court and the judge said, you know what? Even though the DNA met at evidence from his pistol matches this young man mouth, that's, his, that's still not enough evidence that's to convict him. Damn. As a result of that, she dismisses the case. Yep. Now, mind you, right? Mind you. Come on, Will. Mind you, I like your body work. I like that. I like that you're uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah, they got so, you. So, mind you, right? He don't go until Glenn Lay. Like, hey, they come on, Will. Right? Hey. So mind you, he's a commander. When he did that with the pistol, he was a commander, yes, he was. right? Hi. So he was waiting. He couldn't work because he was fighting the charge. Yes, he was. So he beat the case, right? How he beat the case? How the system. The case? How? <laughs> when he How beat the case, right? I'm talking that shit about killing bucks. He goes back to court. I mean, he goes back to work, right? And say, Copa. Copa. Copa made the recommendation, the recommendation to separate him from the department. Yeah. So when Copa make a recommendation, it goes to the police superintendent, okay? okay? Let me give y'all this structure. When Copa makes a recommendation, whether the police should be disciplined or not, it goes to the superintendent. When it goes to the superintendent, he or, he or she is a he now, has always been a he, matter of fact. Oh, yes. But he has to say yes or no to that recommendation. So me and Eddie, I love Eddie, but we fell out over this. Yes, Eddie said no. Nah. Eddie said no, he shouldn't be terminated. So then it went to the police board. When the, when the superintendent and COPA can't agree on a disciplinary action, it goes to the police board. Say police board. Police board. It's a seven member panel right here, every third Thursday. That's why I picked today to come, right? We used to come here for, for, for months, if not years, trying to hold them accountable. Long story short, yeah. Yeah. right? So the police board, said the police board. Police board. The police board took a vote to whether or not to keep him or not. What you think they did? They kept him. They voted to keep him. They kept him. So you got somebody who put their gun in somebody's mouth, right? Put their gun in somebody's mouth and y'all chose to keep them on the force. Say that ain't right. That shit ain't right. Let's go deep on Glenn Evans. What they do? Let's go, let's go deeper. If you enlarge this, let's enlarge this. 132 allegations. That's how many, that's how many allegations that he